on RSO suppositories. RSO stands for Rick Simpson oil, which is a concentrated form of cannabis made using an alcohol extraction process. It comes in about a one gram syringe, so it'll look something like this and can be found at most dispensaries. What you find with suppositories is you get extended pain relief that lasts for a very long time without being uh, unable to function throughout your day. When our patients come in, they're usually treating something like Crohn's disease or they have a severe lower back pain or sciatica, or sometimes they'll even use suppositories to deal with their menstrual cramps as well. When making suppositories, what you're gonna need is your RSO, coconut oil or cocoa butter or some combination thereof. You're gonna need your suppository molds, a syringe or a funnel, something that you can pour the suppository into the mold with. You're gonna need a heating element and you're also gonna need a freezer and plastic gloves for the end as well. The ratio I'm gonna be using is with coconut butter. I'm gonna be having about 100 grams of coconut butter. You can also use cocoa butter or a combination thereof, whatever combination works best for you. 100 grams of coconut butter looks about like this. And the first thing I'm gonna be doing is taking it and actually getting it liquid. So I'm gonna be throwing it into the stove here and heating it up on low heat. The coconut butter will melt very quickly. So you need it on a low temp so you're not burning it. Again, the ratio I'm using right now is about 100 grams of coconut butter to one gram of RSO. Some places will have RSO available in 10 grams. This is one gram right here. As you can see, this is kind of like a more runny consistency here, so it's gonna be a little hard to get all out at once. Yeah, so this is just what it looks like when you're combining the RSO with the coconut butter. As you can see, it starts to get a little more of just like an overall brownish, greenish color to it. You just wanna make sure that when you're stirring it up here that you're not seeing any clear lines. It wants to be thoroughly mixed. This is the color that the RSO and coconut butter turned out for me for my suppository mix. If you use coconut oil or cocoa butter or a combination of any of those oils, or if you even use two grams of RSO instead of one, you're gonna have some color variation and that's okay. Okay, so as you can see here, what I have ready to go is the RSO is really mixed well with that coconut butter. So what I'm gonna be doing next is I'm gonna be using this syringe here to draw it out of this pot here and actually place it into our suppository molds. Both of these things you can get at any local pharmacy or online. I definitely recommend using something that's easy to tear apart like this too because you get single dosing as well. So then over here, this is gonna be here. What I usually do is I put the suppository molds into a cup like this because it's really easy to fill them up and just be ready to go. I'm not using both hands, I can actually do it like this. But for this video I'm actually going to hold it out so you can see it this way. When you're filling them, you kind of just pop them right into there and you'll start to see it fill up. The part that I usually stop at is just where this little bend is here. The main thing is to make sure that each part of the bullet is filled up at the bottom and there isn't any air bubbles in there. And the third one. It does come out really slowly, so you gotta be patient with it. If you try to rush it, you can spill out your suppository mold everywhere and that's no good. And four. Perfect. So when they're done, when you look down into them, you'll be able to see just a little bit of the oil right there. When they're filled up, they're ready to go into the freezer or into your fridge to set. Once the suppository molds are all filled, you're gonna to wanna to put them in the freezer for about 15 to 20 minutes. If you don't have room in your freezer, you can put them in the refrigerator. You're just gonna to wanna to wait a little bit longer because what you wanna make sure is that the suppositories are completely solid before you start taking them out of their package. It's gonna actually look a lot like how the original coconut butter did before we started mixing it. So I'm just gonna put these in the freezer. It's been about 10 minutes now. The suppositories should be ready to come out of the freezer. Don't forget to put on gloves when you're using your suppositories because that coconut butter will kind of make your hands a little oily too. So when you've got your cup here, the suppository molds here are nice and solid. 
Some suppository molds come perforated like these ones here, so you can just break one off. Some of them, though, you're going to have to cut, so keep an eye out for that one, too. Try and get the perforated ones. So this is the one dose suppository still in its mold. It's not ready to go just yet. We need to actually take the suppository out of this plastic casing. Some suppository molds will have a little perforation right on the end here. This one doesn't, so I'm actually going to have to take it, some scissors, and cut it here just to get it started. Just like that there. And then what you'll do here is you'll tear it open. Just like that. And this is your suppository ready to go. See, I've only been holding on to it for a few minutes while making this video, and it's already starting to liquefy and get really oily all over my hands, which is why you want to make sure you're using gloves when you're inserting it and applying it. Also, when you're inserting it, you're going to only need to put it about as far as one knuckle deep. You don't need to go much further than that, and there may be a little bit of mess afterwards, but the pain relief is definitely worth a little mess. Because everybody's body processes THC and CBD a little bit differently, you're going to want to make sure that you're monitoring how your body is reacting to using suppositories by even just taking a note and checking in on how you're feeling every hour. What I like to do is I'll actually set an alarm on my phone to go off and then I'll actually put notes on my phone so that I can monitor how it's working.